I might slow down a little bit, read a little bit, and um, and give you something that'll that'll help you and strengthen your faith. Okay, it's that doesn't stick about that long. It's back there some more, I think. But you know, well, it'll work. Anything. And uh, so tonight, let's uh, get our Bibles. I want to start with um, the book of here. It is. Uh, I want to start with uh, Acts chapter twenty-eight. Acts chapter number 28. That's one way to get rid of him for a little while. I'm just kidding. Uh, Acts chapter 28. (laughs) Acts chapter number 28. Get your Bibles, please. If you understand, the book of Acts concludes the the ministry of... uh, I've got it, y'all. And they... the, The book of Acts is like a bridge. It's like a transitional book. And it records the acts of the apostles. In other words, right when Jesus died on the cross, rose again, and commissioned the apostles, and they got out and started preaching. Now, there was some of this stuff that I'm going to talk about tonight going on actually before the New Testament was even completed. Paul said, I think in 2 Corinthians, that early part there, he said, we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. So there was people already corrupting it, messing with the Scripture before the New Testament was even completed. Now, I want you to understand that tonight, and I want you to look in verse Acts chapter 28 and verse number 22. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. He's talking about the Christians, the apostles. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against real Christianity. It said they called it a sect and everywhere people talked against it. The world has never been a friend of real Bible Christianity. Never has been. Get that through your head. This world, if you're right with God, is not on your side and you're not on their side. Now I'm going to preface this study tonight with a few statements. I want you to be sure and hear what I'm getting ready to say. And that way you won't, you won't get mad or get your feelings hurt when I mention somebody that your grandma likes or something. All right? And my, my opening remarks are, number one, I am not saying at all tonight that all Baptists were always and are right. Don't say that at all. Uh, you know, I know a Baptist is crook. Okay, fine, I do too. I know plenty of it's cr- I know Baptists mixed up doctrinally. I know that. I'm not saying that. So get that out of your head. Number two, I am not saying that anybody who's not a Baptist or was not identified with one of these groups is not right with God or saved or maybe been used of God. There were martyrs in the in the old uh, days that and still are that were not Baptist by profession, and uh, there are people of other groups who stood, were persecuted, and martyred and preached especially after 500 A.D., or 1500 A.D., I'm sorry. That's the Reformation. Now, I am not saying that at all, so make sure you understand that. But when anybody tells you, listen to me carefully, when anybody tells you that the Baptist church began at the Protestant Reformation and came out of the Roman Catholic Church, they are either extremely misinformed or or extremely crooked. And because they do not know what they're talking about, and I will prove that tonight and over the next few weeks. You will be taught in secular education, grammar school, high school, college, and on the Internet, that the Catholic Church is the oldest form of Christianity and that all the other churches come out of the Catholic Church. That's what you're going to be taught. And they will lump us all into one group and say that we're Protestant, and you will even be taught in some places that the Baptist church didn't even begin till the 1600s. How many have heard that by a man named Roger Williams? You've heard that. Well, people like that are extremely ignorant of the subject that we're going to deal with tonight. What you're going to have to understand is, is that when you're studying church history, you've got to realize that the Catholic church run the world from that time there all the way to that time there over a thousand years, that's why they call it the Dark Ages, because they kept the, the lights put out. And did you know that 95% of history 
written during that time were written by people who hated Christians. So you're not going to get the right slant. As a matter of fact, just about all historians write with a slant toward their point of view. That's why you'll pick up one history book and it'll say one thing, and you'll pick up another history book and it'll say something else. I mean, think about it. If, if you were a... Um, if you were a hundred years from now and you were writing about this generation, this generation right now, and you were to write a history of the, of the year 20, 2000 to 2017, and, and let's just say you were an avid Duke fan or something like that, and they said, write a history on the Carolina Tar Heels. Uh, they, he's going to write a sorry bunch of no count. They wasn't no good. They looked up and won one every once in a while. That's their view of history. It's slanted. And, and vice versa. If you had, uh, it's like having the Democrats write a essay on Fox News or vice versa. Fox, right there, you're going to get a slant. Now what we've done tonight and what we're going to do by the help of the Lord is try to take the true history of the real Christians and, and follow it with us tonight. Now they, what, they're say, what they say is, that the real church got persecuted here, it went underground and disappeared, and then in 1500, Martin Luther started preaching, and that's a Protestant Reformation. Well, that's why when you go join the army, or you go to anything like that, it'll have three little boxes to check. Jew, Protestant, Catholic, or Jew. I heard about one young lady that went and joined something like that, and she didn't, she said, neither one, I'm Baptist. I'm glad that young lady knew her history. We're not, I'm not a Protestant. I do, we do protest over some things, but we're not Protestant. We are not Catholic, and we are not Jewish. We are Bible-believing Baptists. Let's see what that means tonight. Now, to begin with, I want you to take your Bible and go back to the book of Matthew just for a minute tonight. And uh, let's start uh, just a little bit, just a little earlier than most church history start. Let's start at the very beginning. Matthew chapter 11, right quickly tonight, and then we're going to get into some study here. Matthew chapter 11, and look here at uh, verse 11. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 11. The first man that was called a Baptist in the Bible was John the Baptist. Was John the Baptist. Now, I know that people who don't like this and don't mean, they're, going to, they're already, their ears are going crazy. You're not going to get up there and tell us that John was about, I'm going to tell you the Holy Spirit called him John the Baptist. You can do what you want to with it. Uh, you can say it don't mean whatever you, I'm just telling you, that's what God called him. Uh, the Baptist meant he, he got people to, to repentance and baptized them. The word Baptist means um, uh, immerse. It baptize means immerse, to put under, to bury, like under the water. That's why we baptize people under the water. Now, John the Baptist, look what Jesus said about him. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, everybody's ever been born, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. John carried the title Baptist. And Jesus said, nobody never been born greater than him. But the ones that's least in the kingdom of heaven would be greater than him. Now, that means this. That means um, John here, uh, Jesus said one time, he said, what, do you, what did you go out there in the wilderness to see? A, bre- a reed shaken with the wind? No, a prophet. And, and a prophet, that's a real prophet. John the Baptist. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. Jesus was not baptized by John the Methodist, John the Presbyterian, John the Catholic, John the Pentecostal. He was baptized by John the Baptist. You say, now, Brother Danny, that ain't what it meant. Well, you, you say whatever you want to. You, what are you going to do with that? That's in the Bible. So the name Baptist goes all the way back to the, uh, the ministry of Jesus Christ when John the Baptist baptized the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what Jesus said? You know what God said? He looked down and he said, uh, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And so he was happy. Jesus done everything right. He did not do anything second class. He didn't do anything wrong. And this was his plan. So 
the Lord Jesus Christ there at 30 years of age. He begins his earthly ministry. That began his earthly ministry, by the way, his baptism at 30 years of age. Uh, John, Baptist was not John's last name. It was a title. Uh, when they was a little baby, they didn't call him John the Baptist. They just called him John. And then when he grew up and he's been in his ministry, that's when he took on the title Baptist. And the Lord said, I am well pleased. Now, with that little introduction in mind, uh, we're going to do a little church history starting there after the public ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Okay? All righty. Let's, let's do this tonight. And I want to start by, by saying, in the days of the apostles, actually before the apostles were even, even and dead and left this world, uh, there was um, a lot going on. And here, there was Peter, James, John, all them guys, and they went out and preached. 33 A.D., 40, 50, along in here. At this time, pagan Rome ruled the world. The Roman emperors, the Caesars, Nero, and, and the, that's called pagan Rome. You'll notice it changes from pagan Rome to here, papal Rome. Papal means the Pope, the Catholic Church, which began right here in 313... A.D. And here in the, in the days of the apostles, did you know, you know what happened to John the Baptist? They cut his head off. Do you know what happened to Jesus Christ? They nailed him to the cross. You know who did that? Rome. The Roman emperors. The pagan Roman emperors. If you wanted to find something good in the Bible, there's two places you'd never find good. One of them's Rome and one of them's Alexandria, Egypt in Africa. Those two places are never, ever spoken of as good. God called his son out of Egypt. God called his people out of Egypt. He called them out. Those places are bad. So Peter was crucified upside down. James and all them other apostles were beat to death. They beat them with clubs. They drug them through the streets. And John, they said, was the only apostle, the apostle John, that's not John the Baptist, the apostle John was the only apostle that did not die a martyr's death. And they tried to boil him in oil, so said the history books, and he wouldn't burn. God protected him, so they banished him to the Isle of Patmos, and he wrote the book of Revelation. And that's where we got the last book of the Bible, John. So we're going back into these days when it all started right there. At that time, Nero and the Caesars hated Christians. They hated them. They killed, they killed James. They killed John. They killed the Lord Jesus himself. They killed, and that was pagan Rome. They hated it because the Christians wouldn't submit to the, to the, to the Roman emperors. There was a man here by the name of Polycarp. That old Polycarp was about, uh, about 156 A.D., and he would not, he would not give in. You might have heard of him studying history. And this man studied under the apostle John. How would you like to have been a convert of the Apostle John right after the Lord Jesus trained him? That would have been something else. So we're going back to the beginning. And John the Apostle trained Polycarp. He wouldn't submit. And you know what they'd done? They told him, we're going to burn you. We'll burn you at the stake. Nero used to light up his garden at night with Christians burning at the stake. They'd put them like this. They'd tie their hands, most time with a chain because the rope would burn off. They'd put fire underneath them and he'd light the garden and have a party with Christians burning. And Polycarp, 86-year-old man, went out there and brother, he went out there that day and they said he'd come up like that and kiss that stake. And he said, I, I, you, you're my ticket out of here. You're my way home. I'm fixing to see my Jesus. And he got on there like that. And they said, sir, you want to recant? And you know what old Polycarp said? He said, 86 years I've served him. He's never failed me one time. And I'm not going to deny him now. They set him on fire. And the fire wouldn't burn right and didn't get up. And finally one of them soldiers took a sword. And right through his gut, brother. And that was the end of him. This all happened back in here. As a matter of fact, they killed 3 million Christians before 300 A.D., 
three million. Buddy, them apostles went out of there and preached all over Asia Minor and up into those other countries up in there, had converts by the thousands, and they're killing them by the thousands. Almost three million of them. Now, about that time, a fella came up, and his name was Constantine. And Constantine, he had this bright idea that he was going to make, uh, what he wanted to do was make a church state. And this, uh, this was something that uh, had uh, never been done before, and obviously. And he said, I'm going to make a church state. And what that means is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix it so that uh, uh, a person has to be a Christian. You know what started that? He had a dream one night, and he saw this sign up in the sky of a big old cross. And that big cross said, there's writing in the sky that said, by this sign, conquer. And he thought God t- showed him that. And he came back and he said, God told me to conquer the world in the sign of the cross. So he had got his buddy there, Augustine, and his other buddy Eusebius that we'll talk about in a minute. And he formed a church state in 313. The Catholic church began. You know what Catholic means? It means universal. One big, giant, universal church. And the law was you convert and become a Catholic or else you're breaking the law and you'll be punished by the law. Now, it wasn't long after that, even at this time earlier, that uh, some of the weird beliefs begin to pop up. And I'm, I'm going to go over some of these with you. Uh, like, uh, uh, like infant baptism, like the Eucharist, like Mariality, worshiping Mary, like... Uh, uh, all these things, that, the indulgences, confession, purgatory, all these old doctrines and, and stuff started forming in the early days of the Catholic Church. Now, while this was going on, there was a fellow popped up here. Oh, I got his date down here somewhere. Uh, about 156, say, no, a little bit later than that, 200, something like that, named Montanus. And Montanus, M-O-N-T-A-N-U-S was his name, and he was a Christian that stayed right with God and kept preaching and kept preaching, and he had followers, and they called his followers Montanist because they followed a man by the name of Montanist. Now let me stop and say something right here. Is it right to follow a man? That's what they always did in history. When a man, when a man got up and had a, had a movement, people called his followers after his name. And the answer to that question is, it is absolutely right to follow a man when he's following God. And all right, that's what Paul said. Paul said, be ye followers of me as I follow Christ. There was actually a group called the Paulicians right here that followed him, and we'll talk more about them uh, later on. And, and this man here, Monetus, he, uh, he, if, you, uh, they, if, you studied, if you studied secular history, they'd say there was a bunch of nuts. They'll tell you he claimed to be the Holy Spirit. They were holy rollers. They were, and I'll tell you what they were. They were Bible-believing Christians that would not go along with the Roman Catholic Church. So the Catholic Church blasted them and called them Montanists and called them heretics. And the word heretic became the word all the way from, from, from then on. Montanus, he, if, you, if you study him, you'd think he's a crazy nut. But you know what he did? You know what Montanus believed? The Catholic Church at that time said, uh, 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 we're going bab- to start baptizing babies. And Montanus and them guys said, oh, no, we're not. And they say, you're going to be baptized this way when you're born. And when they would come over and convert and get saved, Montanus and them would say, your baptism wasn't real. you got to be baptized right. So when that happened, they, they got mad. They had a split. And let me tell you what Montanists believed. They believed, number one, that the church must have a born-again membership that nobody can be in a real church unless they've had a born-again experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it don't sound like much to us because that's exactly what we believe. Number two, they believed that uh, baptism was for adult believers only 
or kids that were old enough to know what they're doing. No baby baptism. No infant baptism. You're going to find out here in the next few weeks there was millions of people slaughtered because they would not baptize babies. They said it don't do no good. You've got to be old enough to repent and old enough to understand getting saved. Then you get baptized. They believed in, in adult baptism. Number three, they believed in a personal holy life, living right. Number four, they believed in church discipline. Number five, they believed in a literal second coming. Number six, they believed in a trinity. And number seven, they believed in a premillennial coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's exactly what we believe. All of it. I could say amen to every bit of that. Uh, but they were probably way more strict on it than we are today. What I'm fixing to show you tonight in the next few weeks is that these people were not always called by the same name, but there is a, uh, listen to me, there is an unbroken line between true Bible-believing churches today all the way back to this group right here called Montanus, and he got his from the apostles. Now, they don't teach that nowhere but in Bible-believing churches because the Catholic church tainted history and taught it the other way. You listen? At the same time, there was a man by the name of Origen. What a name. He's up here somewhere. I thought I got him up there somewhere. Maybe I don't. Uh, Origen, he's supposed to be right in here somewhere. And uh, his name got blotted out. Uh, and he, he was a man who messed with the Scripture. And he told old Eusebius here, uh, Constantine, Augustine told old Eusebius, he said, I need 50 copies of the Greek manuscripts. And they went around destroying all the text of Antioch of Syria. This is not a study on the King James Bible, but the true text came out of Antioch, Syria. You've heard me teach on that before. The tent where we got our King James Bible, they got one up here from Alexandria, Egypt, where Eusebius studied, and he changed a lot of the Scripture. So right then, it wasn't 400 years A.D., and they had already changed the manuscripts that the Catholic Church would use, and they had what they call Alexandrian manuscripts. These manuscripts come from Alex, X, Zandria, Egypt. The true text came from Antioch of Syria where the disciples were first called Christians. First time the name Christian pops up in the Bible is Antioch. And did you know Christian was not really a name that the Lord gave them? Christian was sort of a nickname. It was sort of a, a mockery, really, to start with. The name Christian. And so were these people. They were always called by some kind of nick, nick, mock, nickname or something like that. So that's the monetist. We'll move on just a little bit further. What about this business of following a man? Listen to me. Anytime a man takes a strong stand on something and people follow him, they're going to call him by their last name. I mean, if you know, years ago, people used to call people Castleites. I, I, I have for years, have for years. And, and I thought, Lord, I feel sorry for them. That's the best they can do. Uh, they were called Norisites back years ago, the Ruckmanites. People who believe the King James Bible called Ruckmanites, even though there's millions of people who believe the King James Bible never even heard of Dr. Ruckman. Anytime a man takes a real strong stand on something, people, they, they're, they're given that name by their enemies. They're given that name by people who are mocking them and made fun of them and give them a hard time. So by 150 A.D., a lot of the false beliefs were in place, and by 313 A.D., it was in full swing. Watch this. About that time, 250 A.D., a man popped up, and we call them the Novation. This man right here, and he done the same thing that the Montes believed. Exact same thing. He called it the reappearing of the Montanist. The same bunch of people, the same, they're fighting a different issue. In Revelation 2 and verse 8 and 11, the Bible describes some of this period as persecution from pagan Rome. It was unreal. The, the Fox's Book of Martyrs, all those books like that, record stuff. They, there's a two or three books they say that would put Fox's Book of Martyrs off the shelf. As, uh, the, uh, the bloody massacre that these Christians went through just because of what they believed. And you know what? Here's where this, this name come from, y'all. They had a big split there, and a bunch of the Christians here defected and went and joined Rome so that they wouldn't get killed. 
A little bit later, some of them come back and said, look, we've made a mistake. We want to get back in there. We want to get right with God and get back. And old, old Novation said, you ain't doing it. You need to repent. And they had a big argument and a split over that. And he said, I tell you what, if you do come back, listen, he said, if you do come back, you're going to have to get baptized again and get it done right. And they said, what do you mean by that? You're an adult. You're baptized wrong. Rebaptized. Rebaptized. That's what that word right there means. Anna. Again. Baptize again. So when they came back, they said, uh uh-uh, you're going to have to get baptized all over again, buddy. You was wrong. So they called them Anna Baptist. People, are you hearing me tonight? This was in 250 A.D. before the Roman Catholic Church was ever even started. They were calling them Baptist. So anybody tells you the Baptist Church started in 1600 with that guy there, they don't know what they're talking about. They call them Anabaptists all the way through history. They believe the same thing the Martinists believe, and the Martinists believe got their doctrine from the apostles. You say, Brother Daniel, you saying the Baptist Church went all the way back to the Our beliefs did. Yes, I am saying it. The people in 100 A.D., they believe the same thing we believe tonight. This is not a new thing. This is not something that popped up that had been underground for all these years. God's always had a people that never bowed their knee to Rome. Listen, it was a purity of membership. It was a rigid discipline. Baptism by immersion, by adults only. They believed in the Trinity and no church state. They believed in total separation of church and state. They said the church don't run the state and the state don't run the church. The Catholic church was a state church. Now, about this time, a historian by the name of Cyprian wrote this, quote, whoever breaks from the church, the Catholic church, cuts himself off. If you don't have... uh, If you don't have the church uh, for your mother, you don't have God for your father. That's what they taught. If the church ain't your mother, God ain't your father, the Catholic church. All hope of salvation is lost. Now, you've got to remember, people, most people back in these days couldn't read. And it wouldn't do them no good if they could because they never could get a hold of a Bible. All they knew was what the preachers taught them. And all these millions and millions of people through here, they were told, if the church ain't your mother, the God ain't your father. And if you break away from the Catholic church, you'll you'll have no hope of salvation. You'll die and go to hell. And the Catholic church began the biggest money-making scheme of all throughout history. All these begin to believe infant baptism. They taught if you didn't get your baby baptized, you was an unfit parent and deserved to die because you wouldn't get your kids baptized. Mariolatry. Mariolatry believes that Mary is to be worshipped. And the Catholic Church worshipped her as the mother of God because they say, well, if Jesus was God, Mary was his mother, so Mary must be God's mother and even talk to her to get on the good side of Jesus so he can get on the good side of God and get their prayers answered. That's Mariolity. Uh, confession is started during the Dark Ages time here. We'll get this in a second. Uh, about confessing your sins into the ear of a priest where you'd go into a confession booth and the priest would be on the other side of the little thing and you got to tell him every dirty, low-down, rotten thing you've ever done in your life and then you have to, you put so much, uh, say so many Hail Marys or say many of that, you know, da-da-da-da-da-da-da and you might get your uh, sin forgiven. Now, if you didn't believe that, they branded you as uneducated. They branded you as don't know what you're talking about. Heretic! Heretic! Did you know the first time the word heretic shows up in the Bible is in uh, Acts chapter 8 and verse 37 and Paul said after the way which they call heresy, they call it heresy. So worship I the God of my fathers. You know the first person ever called a heretic? The Apostle Paul. You're in good company if the Catholics think you're a heretic. Amen. They believe I'm a heretic. I believe they're one. You say, how do you know which one's right? By their fruits you shall know them. 
and the Word of God. So here we go. Constantine began. It switched over from pagan Rome to papal Rome. And from this time right here, the Pope and the Catholic Church run the known world. These people down here were not perfect. They made mistakes, but they held on dearly to the historic faith passed down from their fathers. These people here were called Cathari. You know what that word Cathari means? Pure. You ever heard of the Puritans? That's where that word, that word comes from. Not the Puritans like going to pop up over here. On the, in the, 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 these, old, these old Puritans. The, uh, the Eucharist. That means the Holy Mass. When the priest blesses the Mass, they believe that that piece of wafer becomes the body of Jesus Christ. And when the priest blessed the wine, it is literally the blood of Jesus. So when you partake of that bread and wine, you are receiving Jesus Christ. They all taught the way to receive Jesus Christ is through your mouth as you take the Mass and the Catholic Mass and anybody who did not partake of the Mass blessed by the Catholic priest was not a Christian and was damned for eternity. And they scared all these people and they killed them if they did. I, I'm absolutely amazed that they had the guts to stand like they did, not even having a Bible to study. I mean, all they knew is what they had heard preached in their gatherings, in their churches, and, and they knew, uh, uh, Lord, they claimed apostolic accession. They believed the Bible was the final authority in all matters of faith and practice. We believe that. They believe, they, you know what that church, you know what that bunch up there believe? They believe the Bible's authoritative, and the Pope is authoritative when he speaks ex cathedra from the throne. The Pope is infallible. They believe when the Pope speaks ex cathedra, he's speaking as God speaks. And they call him Holy Father. There is no man on the planet that ought to be called Holy Father in a religious sense. No man. Jesus said, call no man your father. For one is your father. That's the Lord Jesus, uh, God the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. They claimed that they believed the Word of God, they rejected transubstantiation. Transubstantiation is the pre turning the blood, turning the bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus, and they rejected it. They say, no, it's a symbol. It's, it's not a sacrament. It's an ordinance. This do in remembrance of me. It has nothing to do with your salvation. When you partake of the Lord's Supper, they call it communion. We call it the Lord's Supper. And when you partake of that, it's due in remembrance of me. It don't save you. It don't wash away your sin. When you get baptized, it don't wash away your sins. Your sins are already washed away in the blood. It is a symbol of what's already happened. New man come up. This is a symbol of what's already happened. Uh, partake the body of the Lord Jesus, receive the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. Do you understand me tonight? I know I'm moving fast, but we've got a long way to go, and I'm going to be done here in just a minute. We'll have to divide these up into three. But I'm preaching tonight on Baptist and their background. That's the title of the message, Baptist and their background. So tonight, uh, let's, let's move along here just a little bit uh, further here. We'll come back and talk about some of these, but during this time, they were called Anabaptists. They were called Paulicians. You know why they were called Paulicians? Because they, they believed that the Apostle Paul's ministry was to Gentile Christians. That's exactly what we believe. We don't say in the other parts, not the Bible, but God gave Paul a special message to Gentile Christians. When they rejected him, Paul said, Lo, I turn to the Gentiles. And God used the Apostle Paul to write Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, right on up to Hebrews where it turns back Jewish again. James, Hebrew, Peter, and John, uh, and Jude. Now, you know what happened? These Paulicians, they majored on the teachings of Paul so much. They said, it's Paul, Paul, Paul. You ever heard them say, Rob, Peter? To pay Paul? That's where they come from. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, these people followed Peter. They believed uh, the, uh, Peter was the first pope. 
And of course he was not. He was crucified upside down because he wasn't worthy to be crucified in the same manner as his Lord. And Paul, they got all the attention. They said, you're robbing uh, Peter to pay Paul. That ain't true. God took the emphasis off Peter and put it on Paul. God Almighty, the apostle to the Gentiles that gave him a special dispensation of grace. And you know what Paul did? He preached it and these people, they, they taught it and taught it and taught it and taught it. And you know what they called them? Paulicians. You know why they called them that? They believed that Paul's, listen to me, doctrine to the church was separate from the teaching, Old Testament teaching to Israel and that the promises of God to Israel in the Old Testament were not all to the church in the New Testament and teaching against that's what we call replacement theology. That's why we got these nuts going around today saying God's all through with Israel and all those promises apply to the church. That's false doctrine, y'all. And the kingdom ain't come yet. They were premillennial. You know what all these people believed? They believe you bring in the kingdom and the Lord's kingdom is now. That's what happens when you misinterpret scripture. Millions of people die. Millions of people. Well, about this time, uh, they went into thousands of cities. They killed them by the thousands. They went into these caves like this, into a cave here, 1,000 of them. Uh, right, and and, and, uh, and the, the Catholic Pope said, you all got to be baptized. And them soldiers said, we can't baptize people. Uh, baptize, we kill people with this right arm. And he said, well, hold your right arm up and let me baptize the rest of you and you can still kill people with that right arm. You think I'm kidding. It's the truth. Baptize all of them with that right arm so they could still kill Christians. That's our kin, folk. That's where me and you come from. You can trace it right back. I just put a bunch of preachers here, some of my favorite. There's thousands of old Baptist preachers down through the country, uh, through the year, that you can trace it right on back to these people. There's a man here, and I think his name was Peter. Um, his, his last name's a little bit hard to uh, uh, pronounce. It's Bruce. Petrobrusian. Petrobrusians. Petrobrusian. And he seized the entire biblical presentation of baptism and forced its teaching home upon the conscience and the life by rejecting the baptism of babies and insisting on the immersion of Bible-believing Christians only. He told them to jump in the lake, that he wasn't baptizing nobody unless he's old enough to believe on Jesus Christ. You see, if you can baptize everybody when they're a baby and then tell them all the life, you're a Catholic, you're a Catholic, you're a Catholic, you can keep them in your church. And then say, if you ever leave the church, you're doomed and can't go to heaven. It's the largest, biggest, most wicked cult that's ever been on the face of God's earth. Now, don't come up to me and say, oh, I know some people that's Catholic and they're saved. I'm not saying all Catholics are not saved. There's a lot of Catholics that are saved in spite of their church, not because of it. If they were truly believed on the Lord, they're saved, but it ain't because of the church. It's in spite of it. About this time, there's a group called the Bogomiles. You've, you've heard these, you've seen these names, believe the same thing, the Albigenses. Uh, no, but I want to get to this one here and... And we'll come back to these next week, maybe. The Waldensons. The Waldensons were a group in Italy. And ladies and gentlemen, this group over in Italy uh, called the Waldensians, they were a strong bunch of people. And these people, they worshiped God. They preached right. I mean, they told it right. Ladies and gentlemen, Lord, have mercy. These people preached and preached and preached and, and good night. They, they, they told the truth and they, they killed them and killed them and killed them and killed them. And there's thousands of them down in the valley. They said there was a man named Peter Waldo that they said they got the name from. But real, most church historians that are right teach that they had that name because of the valley. Now watch this. Waldensians preached the Bible and had the same beliefs that I've talked to y'all about tonight. And they were persecuted so strong, they run them over the mountains of northern Italy, two feet of snow, and there's hundreds of them died running from persecution to save their life. You know why they did that? Because of what they believed. You think it's cold this morning? Two feet of snow. And there's hundreds of them died. Leave your daddy laying there. 
leave your child laying there in the snow and keep going and keep going and keep going. As a wife, your wife dies, your husband dies, leave them laying in the snow. These are people that believe just like we believe. You wonder why I take this serious. You wonder why we believe in prayer. We, I am convinced in my heart tonight that God's always had a people on this earth that stood for him. These people, you know what they've done? They pushed them so much that in, I'm getting way ahead of myself because I'm going to have to go back next week. In 1890s, they run to the United States because they believed they could have some freedom. And they settled in Valdez, North Carolina. The word Valdez means Waldensen in Italian. Our church is sitting. Our land joins their land. I went over there to that trail of faith yesterday. I, everybody here ought to go there. They're closed January and February. You ought to go see what them people went through. They got a little cave over there that's a replica of the caves that they worshiped in. And I'm telling you, it looks like an earthquake hit and a big rock like this and a little bitty hole they had to crawl in on their hands and knees to get in there where they could worship God. They get in there and no guitar. They didn't have no... They was lucky to have one Bible. They had one Bible for 20,000. One Bible per 20,000. Dear God, we got them laying all over our house. Listen, these people paid the price right across the interstate over yonder. Makes me wonder, man. Makes me wonder. God put us right here on the corner of Valdez. We're on holy ground, brother. We're over here with these people. That's what they named Valdez after. The Waldensians, go over there and look at the bakery. Go over there and read those. They got a little thing on every one of those buildings where they were murdered, killed by the millions or thousands, hundreds of thousands. Brother, I'm telling you this this evening. I went over in that little cave and you had to get down on your hands and knees to get in it. I thought, dear Lord. I went through there yesterday. Got down on my knees and I looked around there and there ain't nothing but rocks. It looked like where we'd put potatoes or something. Dirt floor and rocks. And I thought, Lord, these people, these people lived this and went through this all their life. Here we are sitting around watching TV all week, wanting to go see every movie that comes out and wanting to be as worldly as we can possibly live. I ain't trying to preach on that tonight or another. God help people. We got a heritage. We got a heritage and a half. I'll tell you more about the Waldensians next time. They're right across the road over here. They're right across the road. I'm going to hush tonight. We're skipping way ahead. I'm, I will get to John Wycliffe. John Huss, they burned him up the stake. He influenced the Wesleys. Martin Luther was a, the, came out with the Protestant Reformation. And all these churches, these churches here, the Quakers, you know why they call them Quakers? Because in their work, they, they shake quite like an earthquake. It's true. You know, uh, the, and, and the Alexander Campbell, that's the Church of Christ, Believe you have to be baptized. The problem with all these churches, Presbyterian, Methodist, Church of Christ, Anglican, Episcopal, all the other, I ain't got them all, Pentecostal, we'll talk about them later, AME, that's African Methodist Episcopal Church. They all come out of Rome, and when they did, they brought Rome with them. And that's why the Methodist Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Episcopal Church, today, still sprinkle babies. They're baptized babies. Today, you want to know the difference, what a difference between a Baptist? We believe the Bible is the absolute authority in all matters of faith and practice. We believe that only people that's been born again can get baptized. We believe that Jesus Christ is coming literally and going to set up his kingdom. There ain't going to be no peace till then. And we believe we're strangers and pilgrims on this earth. Here we go. I'll give you a little story here. I'm jumping ahead, but I'm going to give you this and I'm through. In the Revolutionary War, when they were fighting for America's freedom, there's a big battle went on. And um, this big battle, y'all, was fought at Kings Mountain, North Carolina. I don't know if you know it or not, but Kings Mountain, North Carolina, is a, was a very 
very famous place. You can go down there to the state park right now. I haven't been, I've been through it a long time ago. I plan on going when the, when the weather gets warm a little bit and looking at this place. The Battle of Kings Mountain. Way back years ago was fought. And old Ferguson, he was from the British Army, was up there on the top of that mountain and there was a bunch of preachers, a lot of Baptist preachers that had started churches. I'll, I'll give you the name. I'll give the man's name. His name was Tidens Lane. Lane. I was over there looking at them names. They got tons of names over there. Some of the names we got right around here in Valdez are on them rocks over there, like Lee J over there where Brother Wayne lived, and some Whistnet, some of them names like that. And um, this boy, Tidens Lane, let me tell you about him just a little bit. I got him wrote down here somewhere. I'm going to give you this and I'll be done. Old Tidens Lane, he was a uh, son of a Baptist preacher. His daddy was a preacher. His, I think his great-granddaddy was a preacher. And there's about seven of them in his family. And Tidens Lane was way back yonder in uh, good night during, during the Revolutionary War. And they fought. And they fought. And they said that a lot of those Baptist preachers took their whole congregations and fought in them battles. And Ferguson got up there on top of the mountain, on King's Mountain, and said, God Almighty couldn't move me from this place. And them preachers and their congregation, now all of them wasn't. There were people in there that were not saved and were not Baptist. But they said it was largely a part of Baptist churches and preachers. And they went up there like that, and they said, that's what you think, buddy. And one guy stayed, one preacher stayed down there at the bottom of a mountain and prayed, and every one of them guys grabbed their swords or guns or whatever them big musket things they had, and they said uh, they started singing hymns and running in there singing, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And brother, they shot that man seven times, and his foot hung in his stirrup of his horse. The horse drug him off down through King's Mountain somewhere. And Thomas Jefferson said, that that battle turned the tide of the American Revolution. And America, when it's all said and done, I wouldn't doubt one bit, when we get to the judgment, God's going to say, America was made what it was because of people that believed just what me and you believe here tonight. Amen. And I got a whole bunch more stuff like that coming. Well, that's why we're not changing. I ain't looking for something else to join. I'm not ashamed to be called that. One preacher, his other preacher, he said, now, he said, now, I'm going to, he said, uh, well, I noticed you got a lot of nice tracks and everything, but your name of your church, what is it? It's called the river or something. He said, where's Baptist? And he said, oh, now, we still believe the same. I still believe exactly the same, but I just think we could reach more people if we took that name off. He said, are you ashamed of it? Oh, no, no, not ashamed of it. That's like a man that won't wear his red and ring. You don't want nobody to know you're married? I hate it. I hate it. But I make myself worse. It drives me crazy. But I'm not ashamed I'm married. And I'm going to tell you something. Them guys, he told that preacher, he said, well, I just don't want He said, look, you don't want people to know what you are? You got to be something. Every church in the world lines up doctrinally with one of them groups. And if you just say, well, we don't want to claim that, that's because you're trying to get people that believe all kinds of different ways to come and join you. I got a whole other sermon on that. But tonight, I read about a 16-year-old girl that they martyred, killed her. And that 16-year-old girl knew she was going to die. They said she was a beautiful young lady. And she knew that it was going to burn her. They burned them by the thousands, hundreds of thousands. God help if it ever comes this, uh, to us. Our, our trials ain't. Our trial is not fear of being burned at the stake. Our trials is TV and the world and the flesh and the, the battle of the flesh on, on us here in America. By the way, by the way, there's still Christians being killed all over the world as we speak, probably more than there was back then. I'm telling you people, we... We got it made. God help us. And they said, that young girl, Brother Wayne, she knew she was going to die. 
and it was going to burn her. And every day for about a week, she'd put her hand over a candle and see if she could stand that heat, trying to get herself ready for what it was going to feel like to burn. 16 years old, 13-year-old boy. They took him and they held him up. They said, are you going to submit to the Pope? And he said, no, I'm a Christian. And they took them uh, pinchers and put, pinched chunks of his flesh out. And then they cut his arm off at 7 o'clock in the morning. And they wrapped it up so he wouldn't bleed to death. They said, you're going to deny that? You're going to, deny that fa- you're going to submit to the Pope? And he said, no! They cut his other arm off, cut his leg off, and at 5 o'clock that evening, cut his head off. And honest to God, I don't think it's going to hurt us. Maybe fast a meal, visit a bus route. I mean, I hate to get off on all that stuff, but we have got it so made. Baptist preachers in America live like kings, eating steak, driving nice cars. And I'm not saying that's wrong if God's blessed us, but Lord, we ought to appreciate it and live for him. That's Baptists and their background. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Now you might have to go back and get this and listen to it again, 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 get all that stuff I spit out because I've got some more stuff, a lot more. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'm going to read you something while she's playing softly. Historian R.B. Cook said, quote, Baptists are able to trace their distinctive principles to the apostolic age. Hear that? When from the union of church and state, Christianity became generally corrupt, there still remain in obscure places churches and sect which remain pure doctrinally and the ordinance of Christ and it is certain that these churches and sects held substantially the same principles which are now held as the views of the Baptist today. And I got a whole bunch more quotes like that right there. God help us. Father, I pray right now that you'd help us in these dark, dark days in which we live to let our light so shine before men that others may see our good works. Glorify our Father which is in heaven. Help us as we learn. Help us as we study. Increase our faith, Lord. We'll thank you and praise you for it. Bless everybody here tonight. Bless Shining Light Baptist Church. May your blessings be upon this church, God, I pray. Bless it in number, power, people, praise in every way. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Some praying this evening.